Uh, so first, um, there is something that all of you need to know. And there is just no excuse if you don't know. Because many of you will interview in variety of locations, variety of disciplines. And this is something that you absolutely have to know. And if you don't know this, then it will be difficult for you to kind of make it forward. Huh? So it's important that you kind of commit this. You don't have to commit it to memory. It should become like a second nature. Okay, And that uh, that is cross-section of a device. Okay, that, That's what you have to remember. It. Everything else you can figure it out, but you cannot forget the cross-section of the device. Okay, It doesn't matter if you have taken the device class or not, but you have to know the cross-section of the device, which is what I'm going to show you and I'm going to show you in an intuitive way so that you'll never forget. Okay, that's something, is that is that clear? Okay, so uh, because we are going to develop everything based on that. Um, we are not going to go deep down into device physics, okay, but there is something like bare essential. You know, as you need, if you are a mathematician, you need to know addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, and maybe a little bit of your this and that, right? So this is kind of the real basic stuff you need to all know. So please pay attention. And uh, so we are going to start with a cross section of a device, and most terms. And most of you are probably have been exposed uh, to this in one of the undergrad classes, I would imagine, right, in the early undergrad classes. So it's a repetition, today's class is uh, a repetition, but I'm teaching things in my own way, uh, so that I can format you in a certain way for the rest of the class, okay? All right. So first is, uh, you know, you, uh, how do you draw the cross section, right? And this is kind of an interview question I ask, um, you know, in, I have been in variety of startups, and it's a starting point. So if you don't make it in the starting point, then it's kind of hard to make it forward, okay, all right? Because we don't need to remember, uh, you don't need to remember equations, this and that, but this is, like, important, okay, all right. So we start uh, designing a MOSFET transistor, in most transistors, so then we start with a p-substrate, okay, and then we, uh, I'm not going to go through lithography and all those steps, okay, but then I'm going to just show you enough uh, to get you excited about it, right. So first we do grow an oxide, this is silicon dioxide, and then on top of that you have polysilicon, I should not use this one. Okay. So this is our polysilicon on top. Let me go. And all this stuff is done using some patterning techniques, lithographic patterning techniques. After that, we do doping. Okay, and this is like the latest uh, technique that people are using, so I want you to remember that. And when you do doping, what will happen is, you will have, let's say this is the doping part, and then you will have, uh, you know, some whole bunch of impurities which are lined up right here. Okay, and these are source and drain regions. And in this particular case, it's an NMOS device, so we would do N plus doping. Okay, and... Uh, what will happen then is, after this, there is an annealing step, okay, and annealing step will kind of make it spread out a little bit, let it go down deep. Otherwise, they are only at the surface, the dopants are at the surface, we want to go, let them go down. And I'm kind of exaggerating things a little bit so that it's visual in your head, okay. So what will happen then is, it will kind of spread out like this, okay, and this is our N plus region. And as you can see, most of the doping goes vertically down, but some of it moves laterally, okay. And this particular process is one of the, you know, very important uh, discoveries. Uh, before we used to use metal, and then uh, the metal part came in later. So you do the diffusions, and then metal came in later, and what would happen is the metal would, you know, go around laterally, and sometimes the transistor would be open, right, there is no overlap. So uh, this particular technique 
what happens is the polysilicon is used as a mask for your dopant and automatically there is something called self align process okay this is what you have to remember self align so what this is doing is your uh, polysilicon gate and the source and drain diffusions they are self align there is a little bit of lateral diffusion that's going on which is okay which is acceptable we want it to be as little as possible okay so um, this is what the uh, nmos transistor looks like and what we show is this part okay this is our this is called l drawn okay you can see right people in the back are you not able to see huh yes no you cannot see okay so is it because of the color okay okay maybe i will write uh, better then yeah please let me know if something is not clear how about this is it better okay good so this is called l drawn and when we talk about technology uh, you have heard 28 nanometer technology 65 nanometer technology okay and now we are at the apple mn processor m3 m4 whatever that's going to be in a 2 nanometer technology what is really going on is this l drawn is shrinking with some caution there but i'm just telling you uh, to make a point what is really going on okay and then uh, so this part is called ld this is due to the lateral uh, diffusion now source and drain regions they are uh, interchangeable there is nothing special about them you know it's symmetrical okay and it depends on where you hook them up so let's start with uh, this as my this is my drain this is my gate and this is my source all right now we need to make a connection to the substrate the substrate is already p minus it's lightly doped okay and then um, we would uh, we would do another doping here all this stuff is done in the same step okay i mean uh, similar mass sets are used all right and this is called body bulk and this is p plus so p plus connects with p minus forms a very good contact and we have n plus um, source and drain diffusions all right so this is what a uh, nmos transistor looks like and let's draw a pmos transistor right here so in the pmos case we start with uh, you know again here the pmos needs to exist in a n minus type of doping right just like a nmos is in the p minus doping so then we we do something called n well okay and in n well we do something very similar okay so this is my gate and this is the the doping that i have done and this would be what kind of doping for pmos huh? p plus all right and then to connect to the n well what kind of doping would we do n plus okay all right so this would be n plus so this is my uh, source region this is my drain region and this is my bulk or a well connection okay so when you want to draw um, like you should be able to draw this cross section of a cmos inverter let's say and what you would do then is you would just do this huh? it's like a very um, please uh, um, just don't look at me okay please use your uh, notebooks to draw these things so that you get a practice huh? because this uh, this is something that um, it's an experiential learning class. You have to do things on your own. Otherwise, you will feel that you are understanding everything what I'm saying. But trust me, in the quiz one, when I ask you to do something, right, you'll you'll not remember and you will have a major uh, issue. You know, I I wish I had practiced it. Uh, that that's one of the disadvantages of all the online learning that's happening nowadays, right? When you when you look at a YouTube video or something, you feel that you got it, right? You understand everything. But you don't retain it. The reason you don't retain it is because you're not using your other senses to participate in the learning activity. So my request to you would be just bring a book, 
it doesn't matter if it's a scratch book or whatever but do all those things uh, don't just read the notes and don't just attend the lectures but try it with you try it along uh, so that all these concepts the basic concepts are reinforced in your in your brains okay all right so um, we will start with a inverter and i like to draw it this way so as you can see it's very quick This is gate. P minus substrate and well P plus N plus N plus P plus P plus and N plus. So this is source drain. This is your bulk, again this is source drain and this is bulk, alright. Just like that you should be able to draw, I mean you can practice this, uh, how to do this and basically what I find is in the interview process, you know almost 60-70% people, they goof this up, you know and it becomes very hard uh, then to go forward and ask complex questions. So this is something that you cannot goof up in terms of N, N MOS should always have N plus diffusion, P MOS should always have P plus diffusion. If you cannot do that, if you don't remember then, then it becomes very difficult if you are applying for a semiconductor jobs, right? Because even if you are applying for a digital job, this concept has to be very clear, alright? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Huh? N well. Um, it's going to come later a little bit, but the bulk, okay? If you, uh, I'm going to go a little bit deeper as we go along. Right now, um, it's a four terminal device, okay. If I don't connect P minus, it's floating, correct? Would you agree? The P minus part, you agree? So, where? Uh, P uh, which part are you talking about? N plus. Okay, all right. Um, what is your name? Ram, Ram, right? Huh. So Ram brought an excellent point and it's very interesting that you are asking questions which I'm going to explain as a segue. So perfect question, uh, Ram. Uh, give me like uh, 30 seconds and I'm coming to that. Huh? Very good, excellent point. So uh, did everybody understand Ram's question? Huh? The question was, hey, why are you uh, not connecting this B uh, to the source, right, Ram? Why aren't you connecting B to the source? That was his question. And um, so this is something that you are probably you have learned in the uh, undergrad classes, right? And you have not seen this as a separated route. I am going to go into the details and explain you why this is uh, so. Just uh, a few more minutes and it is it's kind of perfect uh, segue to what I am going to discuss next. So, so you need to understand, once you understand this, you need to understand how to draw these transistors as a symbol. Huh? That is the next part where you cannot go from. Very important. Where the arrows should be, which way they should be. And I think many of you have gone through interview process over here, you would probably know, right? So, um, when you draw an NMOS transistor, there are two ways you can draw. And I will explain you why they are drawn in certain way. Gate and drain. And then sometimes you bring out the bulb, okay? And this is called bulb. So these are the two ways you will, um, there is a shortcut version and there is a long cut version, alright. So when you, uh, and then when we talk about uh, PMOS transistor, hmm, please draw this, okay. Okay, so this is the way you draw them. Now, um, what you have probably seen is the one on the left side, uh, you know, in your earlier education. And in that case, the bulk connection is something called implicit connection, just like what you said. The bulk is always connected to the source. Uh, that's what you're used to. Okay. So when you um, when you are in a digital technology, right? When you're doing things in digital, uh, when you're doing digital design. 
these two connections are implicit which means that they are always connected to the uh, to uh, basically uh, uh, in in this particular case right uh, the pmos is a common uh, you know uh, common substrate for all the nmoses and one per one devices uh, substrate is no different from the next devices substrate okay so all of them are connected to the to what potential the lowest potential uh, so in this particular case the implicit connection is defined as ground bank bank is something when you draw uh, schematics it's everywhere i don't have to make a connection anywhere uh, you will get to that i'm just kind of giving you a little bit of a heads up right however there are many places uh, where we want to specifically when you do analog design okay you want to bring out the bulk and you want to play with the bulk okay and we want to sometimes we want to take advantage of that. okay so and uh, so in those cases we want to uh, for example uh, one simplest example i can give you is uh, if you have a, a, you know a billion transistor um, microcontroller microprocessor uh, or some nvidia processor right on a, on a chip and you have a analog rf on the same chip then the bulk is going to be the substrate is going to be dancing all over the place uh, because of all this noise which is being coupled and our uh, you know rf analog very sensitive circuits they are going to get all this mess okay and it will corrupt everything so in that case we want to use the bulk uh, connection and we want to make sure that uh, we connect it appropriately and all those techniques i'm going to teach you as we go along okay? so this is an important piece of learning how do you coexist uh, with your noisy neighbor that's a, that's a part that you have to take care you cannot tell them that hey you know can you be quiet it's like being in a hostel and telling your neighbor you know can you turn down the music you cannot do that right you just have to wear your own headphones and quiet them right isn't that what you do most of the time okay so um and in the pmos case uh, we use the bulk connection to our advantage because we have that n tub we call it tub 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 uh, like a bath, uh, bathing tub uh, so here it is uh, called n well or n tub and we sometimes manipulate that according to our advantage just remember that. okay and i'm going to uh, ram did i answer your question yes okay now we're going to kind of peel the onion a little bit more and more as we go along okay yeah yeah so uh, your name naresh uh, your question is why are you using uh, p substrate why can't you use n substrate yeah so um, you are absolutely right i mean it's i mean all of you are amazing you know you are asking me questions which are so pertinent right um, so uh, what happens is uh, there is uh, as you add more complexity to your you know process right cost goes up every mask the cost goes up okay and the digital guys are occupying the most square footage on the chip so they want the, the the processing cost to be minimal and we are kind of you know the analog rf mix signal devices which are there on the chip we have to use what what we get many times huh? there are times when you are doing really high funda stuff right where you can dictate the terms and you say that i want triple well technology and the ceo shall listen to you because you are trying to do something really high performance and eh, which cannot be done anywhere else so uh, that option is available where you can use something called triple well process and i think you can stretch your imagination we'll get that later because we are kind of moving forward too much if you have n well you can also have a p well huh? and then uh, then you can do your business in there and you can isolate your substrate connection from the neighboring guys mm -hmm. okay. so um now let's uh, do a little bit of device physics just enough um, so that we uh, we can kind of you know foundation is clear all right so let's take our um, i'm going to start with an nmos device and what we will do is we will apply very small dd 
drain voltage we will apply a very small uh, drain voltage all right and then uh, we will ground the p plus which is our p minus substrate okay and then i am also applying vg gate voltage in this fashion okay are you with me so far what i have done source is grounded the drain i am applying slightly positive voltage just uh, so that you know we don't get into corner case and then the gate voltage uh, i am changing and i want to see what happens because that's kind of what the mosfet works right like gate is uh, so, so uh, in a in a simplest way if you want to look at a mosfet right uh, all of you have a, have seen the wash basin tap right so there is you can say that the tap connection which is coming from the wall is a source connection and then the tap connection which is going in your sink is a drain connection right and the what is that it's a gate connection okay i think you get the hang of it right so you apply apply potential to gate you are more the twisting turning you do with the with your tap what will happen more water water is like current more current understood i think this is something you should never forget huh? now you will never forget right i think this imagination keep these imagination allegories in your mind so that uh, you will never forget okay so that's what is going on and you we always say we know what is digital connection of a mos right what is a digital connection you full flow or turn off it's one or a zero huh? but where is the real amplification happening how does a mos do amplification i'm kind of digressing but i think i'm kind of enjoying this part because looking at your faces right so when you twist let's say in a this way right you are only applying a small force to the tap okay you are just doing this 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 and what will happen to the water there is a large amount of water coming in which is going up and down up and down and that's what amplification is all about do you get it okay so you are applying a small sinusoidal wave to the tap gate and then at the output current you are getting a large change in the um, so that's the kind of distinction between analog and digital is that clear is the amplification part clear to you uh, because we are changing the current so much by just supplying a small uh, small uh, input at the gate hmm? okay so um, what is really going on from the device physics point of view here right so um, as you um, as you apply the gate voltage right and as as you start increasing the gate voltage what will happen it's becoming positive okay and below is a p minus so p minus means it has a very small amount of holes in there less number of holes and they just say okay because it's positive potential applied they get repelled from the surface is that clear so they go away and at certain point what will happen is you will be left with that whole area under the gate will be depleted depleted means there are no more carriers okay and if you keep increasing the voltage a little further what will happen the electrons from the source and drain will start getting attracted okay and then there is suddenly we have a channel under there okay so um, uh, there is a concept called threshold voltage okay vth let's write that down and again you know i'm not going to explain all the equations but uh, for sake of completion you should know and i'm going to give you all the definitions and if you want to dig in further i can give you uh, one of the other lectures that i do where i kind of dig in a lot deeper um, and you can kind of um, you know any fundamental questions you can get answered and of course we can always debate um, in moodle okay so i can explain more okay all right so um, is it clear what happens at vth huh? we are getting we are making the p type substrate which was p minus we are making it just negative enough so that the concentration is exactly opposite what does p minus mean it will have a certain number uh, per cubic uh, either centimeter or so of of uh, impurities and that was holes positive uh, now it will become negative but equal number and that's kind of the definition of threshold voltage vth so it has become equally negative huh? and then there is a channel form and that's what we call it vth so this is vth and right now i'm going to just give you definitions so vth is equal to 5 ms 
plus 2 phi f plus q depletion divided by c ox. Okay. So, phi ms is basically work function. Um, difference uh, between gate and substrate, okay, and then phi f is called surface potential. And that is given by equal to kt over q ln n sub divided by n r. I am going to explain you all this, okay. So, n sub is the doping concentration, doping density of substrate and n i is electron density in undoped. So, if this surface potential business, right, I like to give visualizations. So, think about you have a water cup, okay, and there is some water already in the cup, okay, and now when will that water flow out, okay, only when that this is what is signified as surface potential, okay, the difference between the, the rim and the level of the water. Okay, and all this stuff is, I'm kind of giving you visualization so that you, you can, you can latch on to the spirit of what I'm trying to teach you. Is that clear? So, if you add more water, and how do you do that? By changing some things in your technology, like you'll change N sub and things like that, right? Then the water will come close to the surface. And what does that mean? I have to apply very little thing to get the water to spill out. Imagine that. Is that clear? So, that's what this surface potential is all about, okay? So, as you can see the VTH, um, I can reduce 5 ms, I can reduce uh, 5 f and uh, you can make VT0, VTH0, okay, and you, you have created a new device, but that device may be useful only in certain places. You cannot use it as a digital gate because the transistor will be always on, no, we don't want that. We want the value of the voltage to be, let us say you have a 1 volt technique, uh, 1 volt supply voltage, then you want the VTH to be uh, 300, 350 millivolts so that you can turn on and off both the transistors, okay. So, all these things are as a process, if you are taking a processing uh, class, uh, VLSI uh, design process, then uh, you have all these handles that you will play with, okay, and then you will make sure that the device is good, okay. Uh, Ram, can, you, can I finish one piece and then what I will do is, I am um, really excited that all of you are asking awesome questions. What I will do is, I will do maybe 10 minutes and I will stop. And then you ask me questions and then I will do 10 minutes and you, you ask. Thank you. But I want you to ask me questions. I am not saying that you should not ask it because questions is where it is going to be learning. Okay. And if you feel uncomfortable about asking questions, ask on Moodle. Okay. Uh, so, the next part is um, Q depletion and this is the charge in the depletion region. Okay. And that is given by 4q epsilon si by f and sub and square root. Okay. So, epsilon si is the dielectric constant of silicon and you should know that uh, epsilon si is 11.68 and epsilon of SiO2 silicon dioxide is about 3.97. Okay, and C ox is the gate oxide yeah. capacitance. Okay, equations, equations, right? I want you to remember the proportionalities. Let us connect the dots with proportionalities, okay. So, uh, let us say that uh, in this particular equation, mm -hmm. if the C ox decreases, what does that mean? That means I am going, I am making the, the gate oxide thickness, I am going to make it larger and larger, is that clear? 
right? If the if the gate oxide comes very close to substrate, what will happen? The CO2 will increase. Huh? And what does logically that tells you that you have more influence on that surface, correct? If I apply a positive potential, I will have, you know, it's almost like a magnet, right? It's going to mess with the charges right there. So if if CO2 decreases, what do you think should happen to our threshold voltage? Increases. Does it make sense? The equation makes sense. Similarly, the 5F I've explained. If the 5F increases, the glass water level goes down. What do you expect? Again, so those are the things you have to remember. And rest equations, I think, uh, I don't expect you to remember all the square roots and everything. The second thing I want you to remember, uh, most important things, um, I, I keep getting into this interview business, right, uh, is something that we all kind of don't pay attention to. And specifically, the example I would give you is one of the, uh, one of the space shuttle missions. It didn't succeed because somebody made a mistake in units. Okay, if you don't make, a, if you make a mistake in units, that's a disaster. So always ask that question whenever you are solving the problems. See, if you make a mistake in your exam, that's okay. Okay, you just get less marks and nobody gets harmed. But if you make mistakes in, in units in real life, because the rest of the people are trusting you, let's say you are designing an airplane's circuit, right? A lot of lives are riding on that. So don't make mistakes in the units. Always remember units are, has to be right. So always do a zeroth order calculation, put the units together and then see, does it make sense? Have I made some mistake here? Uh, units are important. So, um, so uh, let's come back to uh, how the transistor works now. Okay. And then I will stop and I'll, I'll take questions from Ram and everyone else, right? So um, as we... So I'm just going to draw these two guys, source and drain, and applying a gate potential. And here we are calling this drain, and this is my source, which is grounded. Okay. So um, as I said, as I apply gate potential, which is beyond threshold voltage, right? Then what happens? The the electrons are sucked into the channel. They are attracted to the channel, and uh, they are basically uh, attracted because of the positive potential of the gate. Is that clear? Because there is a source. That's why it's called source. The source of electrons will come in and they'll just be present uh, because they love being close to the uh, positive charges, right? So, so we will have this. Um, feature right there. Okay. Now let's kind of um, again, you know, I want to do the calculations so that you, I want to simplify them so that you will remember what's really going on uh, because all of you are familiar with the standard MOSFET equations which are like non-saturation region, saturation region, and your ratta mara hai. I don't want you to do that. I want you to have the insights, as I like to call it. And I want to give you the insights so that you will never forget why this happens and why that happens, right? So let's let's kind of um, pay attention to this, okay? So uh, the channel charge, QD, is uh, basically, uh, it's in coulombs per meter, mm -hmm. and It's per unit length. That's the way it's defined in this in this particular case. So this channel charge is given by C times V. Okay. And what is our capacitance? C ox time, width and length. Okay. So I forgot to mention something. Um, so let's uh, uh, let's backtrack just one more one minute. Okay. And uh, we will we will look at this particular. Where is our device? Where did I do that? Okay. It is okay. Maybe we can do it here. I think I, uh, uh, okay. All right. Now this is something um, uh, that you need to uh, be able to do. So this is something I have done as a cross section. But you need to have a feel for the three dimensional image of your uh, device, right? So what is the three dimensional image look like? It looks like this. Are you able to follow what I'm doing here? Okay, so I'm just stretching it back in, um, in, in the, in, in the, in, inside my, okay. Is that better? Are you getting it? So all I've done is I've kind of extended it inside the screen uh, so that I've, you have a feel for what's width and the length of the device. Okay, so length I already told you, 
what is the length? This is the length of the device. And that length we are shrinking it smaller and smaller and what does that do to you? The transistor gets faster and faster because now I have to, short, to do a very short distance travel, right? Okay. And then width is the one which is in the screen, this way. And logically what does width tell you? If I increase width, what should happen? A simpler one. So, something happening more. So, which is like having multiple transistors in parallel. So, you have one tap, you have yet another tap, you have yet another tap, you have yet another tap. The gate voltage is the same, but the flow of the current will start increasing. Does it make sense? Okay. So, logically you should feel that uh -huh, if I increase the width, the action should multiply itself. Okay. So, if I have a one unit device and if I have two unit device, then the current will double. That's a logical thing that you need to. So, is the width and length concept clear? Yep, all right, good. And for you, probably it's uh, repetitive, right? Because we did this in the previous class, but I, I think it's okay. Okay, all right. So, um, now let's, uh, let's look at the, how do we derive the equation for the transistor in a simplest way? Okay, that's what I want to teach you. So, uh, when we are um, looking at this transistor, right, you are, uh, let's say, at this point, let's say we are at x inside the transistor and you are going from 0 to L, okay. So, we are traveling from 0 to L and x is somewhere in between, let's, let's look at that. And then, sorry, I forgot to put voltage here, voltage here is VGS minus V. Okay. Now, why do we have this VTH? Because only after VTH voltage, the real action starts. So, we apply, we apply, we apply VGS and we say, oh, this, before VTH, no action is happening. So, you have to subtract the VTH out from our voltage equation. Okay. That's kind of the logical way of explaining. All right. So, what we can say is that the charge per unit length, QD is then we can say that anywhere in the channel at, at a place x away from the source okay, is going to be width, um, sorry I think I made a mistake here. This should not be charge per unit length. This is just the charge okay? and the charge per unit length is where we divide by L. Okay? So, this is the charge in the overall um, um, in the substrate, right? Okay. okay. So, charge per unit length is going to be width C ox and Vgs minus Vx, potentially at Vx minus Vt. Okay. And um, our assumption is that the drain voltage is greater than 0. We are not defining it right now, but it is greater than 0. It is not 0. Because if it is 0, then nothing, no action happens. It is just the, there is no current flowing. Okay. It has to, we have to have slightly positive voltage. All right. So, what we can then say that, okay, if this is my QDX in the channel, okay, um, and here I am defining it as uh, greater than 0. So, uh, our IDS or ID will be equal to minus W C ox and then this is VGS gate to source voltage Vx minus Vth and then we are looking at current. So, current means charge, multi charge density multiplied by Velocity, right? Because um, current is measured as number of charges going through per unit of time, certain cross section, right? So, so this is velocity of the charges, and this uh, from from device physics, I think all of you probably know, uh, velocity is equal to mu n times e. E is the electric field, and this becomes minus mu n times d v by d. Okay. Voltage, rate of change of voltage per uh, per distance. 
uh, that's what it is. Now the negative sign here comes in because it's we are talking about electrons. Okay. And similarly, this negative sign is also coming here because we have electrons as carriers. Now, this is the charge, uh, this is the current at any place in the channel at unit x, right? So, now we want to figure out the total drain current, which is going from uh, drain to source or source to drain, uh, depending upon the carriers that you're thinking about. Then, what do we do there? We integrate this. IDS. So, we bring out the, okay, let me rewrite the intermediate equation so that we don't make a mess. So, IDS dx is equal to W C ox VGS minus VX minus VTH and times uh, DVX. Okay. And I forgot something. Okay. The mu n has to be also here. Okay. So now we can integrate both sides. Um, so when you go from, when x goes from 0 to L, okay, we get the, the drain current, okay, so which is um, IDS dx, we go from 0 to L. And on the right side, uh, what is the voltage going from? Source voltage to the drain voltage. We're going from source to a drain voltage, right? So here we are going from 0 to VDS. The voltage is going. So, this is mu n, w, c ox, and then we have uh, v g s minus v x minus v t h. Okay. And I think all of you know how to solve this, right? Mm -hmm. What will be the final outcome? It will be i d s um, uh, times l is equal to mu n. C ox W and what goes inside? Uh, VGS and VT are fixed, correct? So then they become VGS minus VTH times V uh, DS minus the minus VX part. What will happen to it after integration? VX square divided by 2, okay? So then this will become VDS square divided by 2. Everybody clear on this? Yeah? Okay, all right. So then we can say that, okay, IDS is equal to mu n C ox W by L VGS minus VTH VDS of VDS. Agree? So what does this equation look like from the VDS point of view? Rest is all fixed, let's say. The gate voltage is fixed. Uh, math 101? Parabola. parabola. Excellent. So it's an inverted parabola, right? Because the typical parabola looks like this, huh? Will be a little bit flipped. Okay. So then let's draw the uh, draw the picture here. This visualization is important. Okay. So let's say you choose VGS of some value, VGS one. Hmm? Then what will happen is uh, this equation, okay, right now um, is valid only uh, when there is a channel and we're going to go into the, the next part of the equation. So right now we're going to say that, okay, only when um, uh, VDS equal to VGS minus VT till that point, this will be valid, okay. So we will be saying that, okay, this is the first part of the parabola. something like this, okay? And these are basically different, different VGS values. So this is VGS one minus VTH. This is VGS two minus VTH. And this is VGS three minus VTH. VGS one is smaller than VGS2 and VGS2 is smaller than v VGS3, okay? And what are we plotting? Anytime you plot, here is another interview trick. I did this, now I can say I did this mistake intentionally, 
What is the mistake that I have done in this picture? Nothing to do with, it's very common sense mistake. I have not defined what my axes are. Huh? Very important. Just like units, axes are always important. So, because otherwise it has no meaning. So, what is the axis? If you may help me. Drain to source huh? current. And what is the y x axis? VDS, huh? Remember, okay. VDS. Good. Okay, you are all with me. Uh, so, and this is called triode region. So, this is the plot that we get. And um, the next part, before I take questions, I just want to uh, go through one uh, particular uh, nugget, right? This particular equation, right? What happens to this equation if uh, VDS is much smaller than 2 VGS minus VTH? What can you do here? If VDS is much smaller than VGS minus VT. The right part we can ignore. Does that make sense? Huh? We can ignore this part, right? Again, insights. We are doing this for insights, okay? Um, we do everything accurately and then we start thinking, okay, uh, you know, for zeroth order calculation, what can I do? First order what calculation, what can I do? So, you have to structure your thinking like that. Huh? Same thing everywhere you do, whatever you do in your life, right? For zeroth order, first order, second order. Because then you will be able to remove the clutter for your thinking. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about even in life, right? You know, so that's an important piece that I'm trying to tell you here. And this is displayed right over here, okay, nicely. So, what is the, uh, even though the equation looks so complicated, right? And what we are saying is that, oh, if VDS is less than VGS minus VT, you know, very, very close, then I can just ignore this part, right? And then, uh, then something new you uncover very quickly. And let's see that. So, uh, let's say that VDS is much, much less than 2 times VGS minus VTH. Okay. Then your IDS, which you will agree with me, mu n C ox W by L VGS minus VTH times VDS. Agree? The last part we have ignored because it's so small, right? And now, what is this telling me? What is this? Uh, if VGS is fixed, what does this look like? What kind of component does it show? It looks like a resistor, uh, V equal to IR, correct? Okay. So then we can say that on resistance of this transistor is BIDS divided by BVDS. Okay. And then I'm just going to put it out like this, inverse of that. Hmm? So that would be equal to 1 divided by mu n C ox W by L. VGS minus VTH. Okay. So, um, what this is telling me is that if I keep increasing VGS, okay, what will happen to the resistor? It will decrease. Okay. So, then I can draw this as a resistor okay. and the resistor is from drain to source and the control is my VGS. Agreed? So, increase VGS, the resistance will grow down. Okay. So, this is a very simple thing that we will invoke many times in future in this particular piece. As an analog designer, we love this fact and then uh, it helps us in many, many ways. So, that's why I'm bringing it out to you right now, okay, this particular part where we kind of make sure that the VDS is small, hmm? okay. And this happens, basically what we are trying to say is that you are looking at this part of the curve when VDS is small, okay. So, we are looking at that part and we are saying that, oh, it's linear over there. All right. So, now let's, uh, okay, uh, where is, um, huh, Ram, question. I'll take questions now. This is kind of a nice place to stop. Anything? Surface potential? Analogy, ha, 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 ha. You want me to go through that again one more time? Okay. So, analogy is that if you have a water in the glass, right, and uh, when will that water start flowing out? It will depend on the level of the water from the surface or the rim of the glass, that height, agree? So, if the water, there is absolutely no water, then I have to pour a lot of water in the glass before it starts flowing out, okay? So, if it's very close to the surface, then the 5F is very small. If it's a little bit below, then 5F is large and that is decided by the, uh, how you engineering the device, 
your n sub concentration and all those things. I, I can see the expression on your face, you're not convinced. If you don't like the analogy, it's okay, you can ignore it. Water is the carriers, right, we are dumping in, right? Water is the current that's going to flow, correct, in that sense. Because what is the purpose of VTH is we are getting carriers under our channel. Uh, when will they come? Only when you go, you, you overcome the 5F part. And that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, that is, I cannot get into that right now. Okay. So that's kind of the, the real device physics. Basically, there is a whole bunch of actions which are going on in the transistors. And those are modeled by those three things which I showed you. The 5MS is the, uh, it's a physical property of the device. Okay. The work function difference, uh, that's a 5MS. And 5F I already explained. And the last one is the existing charge in the depletion region. Okay. So if I have to explain you how to derive VT, that particular equation, we will have to go through a good amount of churning. Uh, okay. Uh, that I gave you already that, right? The 5F, uh, 5F you understood surface potential, right? Similarly, the 5MS is that the materials that you're using. So use polysilicon and you have a substrate which is a P-type silicon, right? So what's the difference in the levels, let's say, the work function? If you use a metal, the work function is different. So these are all uh, kind of uh, physics um, attributes uh, of semiconductor design. Um, I hate to say this, but I don't want to latch on to that right now because I get too excited to explain all those things. And then what we will happen is we will lose the perspective. Uh, then this will become look like a device class. Uh, all right. And many times I'll goof up because. <laughs> okay. Any other question about what we covered? Huh? Bolo. Why do we? Huh. So I is equal to. Uh, I is function of voltage, right? So I want to just see rate of change of I versus the voltage. Ah, we, Don't go into small signal yet. We are going to get there, okay? Right now, do you agree with what I did or not? I think the... I am looking at rate of change. Okay, rate of change of I versus rate of change of, uh, not rate of change or delta of I versus delta of V. That's all I'm trying to do. Okay, uh, why don't we uh, talk about it after the class? Okay, if there is some confusion, I'll, I'll try to uh, get that out. Any other questions on, ah, bolo, bolo, bolo. Huh, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. Just, just me. Yeah, bolo. Uh, so, IMS is different between gate and gate. 5MS is a work function difference. So, M is a metal actually. Metal and semiconductor, hmm, typically. So, that is generally large. If you have a metal and a semiconductor, the work function difference is large. Okay. And those levels that you draw, right? Whereas, if you look at polysilicon, what I can, so I think I'm again going into my favorite topic of devices here and we can spend the next half an hour on this. But why is polysilicon important? Because I can control this 5MS. Okay? I can dope it whichever way I want and I can control the 5MS. If I have just a metal, I'm stuck. If I use aluminum or whatever, I'm stuck. I cannot change that. Because polysilicon, I can make it conductive P plus or N plus by just doping the hell out of it. Okay? So that's kind of the insight I want you to have that 5MS can be controlled. Let's move on to the next part. Okay. Huh, can I? QD. So there is a profile of charges in that substrate, right? Okay. And what we are saying is that, oh, it's changing as I go from source to the drain. Okay. Then I take a slice of small delta X piece and then I'm integrating from source to drain. I'm moving from source to drain to calculate the total current. That's all I'm doing. Huh. So, okay. Uh, uh, what is your name? 
Pravelika. Okay. So, um, Pravelika, what is going on is, think about it this way, right? Um, when you are at the source, what is the potential in the channel? When you are at the source? Zero. Because you are at the source. A source is connected to ground. Okay. And when you are at the drain, what is the potential? VDS. Okay. And in between, what is going on? It's VGS. Um, the, the channel potential is going to be VGS minus VT will come into play. Because you have to subtract the uh, VT will have an influence on the channel potential. Okay. And now we are saying that that channel potential is a variable that will go from 0 to VDS. And that's what we are talking about. No, not clear. Yeah, for, for, for the purpose of our uh, discussion, yes. Okay. Um, okay, so now what happens when VDS? I think you already know the answers, but... Uh, greater than VGS minus VT. So this is, um, I think, Pravalika, right? Uh, I'm coming to uh, what you're asking right now. What is really going on here? And you pay attention to this part. Okay, so let's draw the channel again. We are applying VGS. So, uh, in this particular case, um, when uh, you apply VDS equal to VGS minus VTH, okay, then um, our, uh, let's, let's remember our QD, X is equal to W C ox. VGS minus VX minus V. So, in this case, uh, if I substitute uh, the Vx, okay, because now that's the potential, right? When you go from 0 to uh, source voltage to the, uh, to the drain voltage, what will happen to our charge? What will be Qd um, uh, at drain What do you think will happen? Huh? Then Vx equal to Vgs minus Vth. What will happen? It will become 0, right? You follow that? Okay. So then, uh, what the profile of our uh, device is going to look like this. Something like this. I'm again exaggerating it in the source direction, uh, but you, you kind of get the feel for it. Okay. So, um, and, um, and as, uh, uh, so basically what we are saying is this will become 0 because Vx is equal to VGS minus VTH. Okay. So, now um, this is the condition when VDS is exactly equal to VGS minus VTH. Okay. And now let's say we start increasing VDS further. What will happen? I start increasing. So, this part, right, it will start going away. Uh, from the drain region because you ha you are, you have to have an extra drop um, because that voltage cannot be still uh, you know uh, it cannot be equal to VGS minus VTH anymore okay so then what will happen is I am going to just erase this and So I'm going to exaggerate this and it will look like this, let's say. Okay. And this part is called being pinched off. You pinch off the channel and that's why it's called pinch off region and this is the pinch off region. So this is the part, okay. And what is the voltage drop there? Is the excess uh, VDS value. Okay, so VDS minus VGS minus VT will be dropped across that point. Okay, does that make sense? 
Now, if you keep increasing that, what will happen? The depletion region will keep increasing. There will be more electric field. And the, the electrons are coming from source. They're traveling so much distance. And they are just swept away like that in that field. And then they zoom across uh, to, the, uh, to the drain region. I just want you to have that visual in your head. So, as you keep increasing VDS, you know, you can get into trouble if you increase the VDS too much. Okay, that's all I'm trying to tell you. All right. So now, uh, in our equation part, we have a left side and right side. Okay, let's, uh, uh, so this part is called, this is our new length now. Let's call it L prime. Okay, because now length has changed. Uh, the dip, because of the pinch off, that point is moving in. And for now, let's just assume it's something L prime. And we'll, we'll get into what this L prime business is. Okay. And now what will happen is, uh, I want you to derive the same equation we did before, okay? And you already have it in your uh, in your uh, book, okay? So what we are going to do now here, uh, so I'm going to re reuse this, okay? And what I'll modify uh, using a different color, we'll go from zero to L prime. Is that clear? Same equation, no changes. And what happens on the right side? Would you go to VDS? No, because you are limited to VGS minus VT. When you look at the channel, right? The channel, the triangle is formed only till VGS minus VT. Okay, so this part is not VDS anymore. It's VGS minus VT. Agreed? And after that is that extra voltage drop that happens. Okay? And we are talking about that L prime is slightly smaller than L. Okay, it's not like it's... It's like half the channel or something. We are talking about just, I'm just magnifying it for your visuals. Is that clear? Okay, all right. Uh, any doubts on what I just did? Um, I forgot her name. Okay, all right. Huh? Is this part clear? All right. So, what will happen then is this particular equation, can you do it for me now? Can you all uh, solve this equation for me? Exact same equation. What will be ID is equal to some, I mean, just try it yourself and tell me. Should I, anybody wants to volunteer? What would be the answer? ID will be equal to half, huh? half mu n C ox W by L, L prime, L prime, huh? that is important, W by L prime. VGS minus VTH squared. Hmm? Okay. Does everybody everybody got this? Oh, good. Great. So what is L prime is defined as where the pinch off happens. Okay. So now um, what we should now kind of define is VGS minus VTH, okay? This is called VBSAT. It's just a terminology, huh? because that's like once you decide a VGS and VGS minus VTH, it's called VDSAT. And you will use that term quite a lot, so I just want you to be aware of it, okay? And then when a VDS is greater than VDSAT, okay, what happens? What happens to the current? Is the current changing with respect to VDS anymore? Not really, right? Current is fixed. So we call it saturated. The transistor is saturated. In the previous case, we called it triode or also called a linear region. Linear because that resistance is changing linearly, okay? But in this case, there ain't any change in the current after this, after you reach that potential. And this is called Saturation. Okay. So, um, so basically, your ID is equal to C ox W by L. And for most calculation, we use L. Close enough. Huh? But I will reserve that right when I uh, talk about all the non-idealities. Okay. But when you generally write uh, hand analysis equations, we say L prime L close enough because you are talking about really sliver over there. Hmm? Okay. 
and uh, you also need to know how the PMOS device looks like. So if you if you draw a PMOS device, because people get confused uh, as soon as you change from uh, NMOS to PMOS. Okay, so I want to make sure that you are fully familiar. So in PMOS, what is the source? P plus. What does P plus have? Holes. The holes are flowing from source to brain. Huh? So the arrow is showing the flow of the current. Okay, so flow of the current is from source to drain. And in NMOS what happens is the electrons which are flowing. And they are also flowing from source to drain. The current is exactly opposite. Okay, so that you have to remember. Huh? The direction of arrows is very critical. You have to remember that. Otherwise you, yeah. Um, whenever that happens to you, you should just reset. Ask the interviewer, please can you ask me the question again? And like, can I restart again? Uh, because erase and restart again. Uh, and then, um, so these basic confusion should not happen. Hmm? Okay. So now in this case, uh, you know, the ID, the drain current is equal to, so this is, a drain current is flowing like this, ID is equal to half mu P C ox W by L and in this case, it will be VSG minus mod of VTP. I'll explain all this, okay, square, okay. Because VSG means that the potential you are applying to the source is always the highest potential. So it's this potential that you are applying, plus minus. Okay. So don't get too confused about this. In case of NMOS is VGS, in case of PMOS is VSG. Uh, people do all sorts of things and they put negative signs and follow one method. And I think since I'm teaching you, follow my method. Okay. All right. Uh, and then VTP is given as negative number. Okay, so you take a mod of it, and now uh, visually everything will be clear to you. You will never get confused if you follow this one. VTHP. Okay. So let's look at our um, our picture. Uh, where is the picture? Huh. Okay, uh, the picture. Uh, what is going on is so. What happens after VGS one minus VTH? Flat. Carry further. Agree? The, the the current doesn't change. Okay, and this is happening at VGS one, VGS two, VGS three. That's the potential we are applying. If you apply a higher potential, then it will go saturate at a higher a higher value. Makes sense, right? So now uh, we will briefly go into uh, two pieces. So I'm going to take a little extra time because uh, we kind of missed out a lot in the beginning. Okay, is that okay? Uh, but I think it's important that we we finish the found. Follow-up point is uh, that I'm trying to make here is um, since I showed you this, right? I kind of lied to you. And that's why I was not uh, taking your question. This green part, I'm saying that oh, it's flat, but in reality, it's not flat. Okay, but I want to give you insight for why it's not flat. And the insight is right here, and let's not miss that, right? So the insight part is here, which is source drain, right? All right. So let's define three things. This is our delta L. Okay. After you got into the pinch of mode. That difference is the delta L, which is very small, but let's define it as a delta L. And this is the one, what did we call this? L prime. And this is my L drawn. Okay, all right. So, um, if, um, what is delta L? What will happen to delta L if I increase VDS? Decrease? Increase. Everybody agrees? Makes sense, right? Because if I increase VDS, then the it's going to get pinched off earlier and earlier. Makes sense, right? Yes, no? Okay. So, uh, delta L is uh, proportional to VDS. Everybody agrees, right? No. So, then if it's proportional, then we say that delta L by L is a percentage change is given by lambda times VDS. Okay. So, it's a 
percentage change uh, that we are putting here. Okay, and this is all is happening in saturation. And this lambda is function of what kind of process you have, what kind of stuff you have done in the process. It all depends on that. Okay, so let's not go into that. It's uh, it's just a constant, hmm? uh, proportionality constant. And now uh, we can say that uh, you know what is L prime divided by L is equal to L minus delta L divided by L, and what is that equal to? One minus lambda. Everybody agrees? So then I can say that let's take a reciprocal 1 divided by L prime is equal to 1 divided by L and then uh, this part is small, very small because it's a it's a non-ideality we are talking about and if it's in the denominator it's 1 minus lambda VDS and if we bring it up to the numerator it will look like 1 divided by L. Yes. Everybody agrees? Okay. Now, let's go back to the original lie I told you that it's flat, right? And we will substitute that L prime. Do you remember I conveniently ignored it? Uh, I said that, oh, close enough, 1 over L. So, we go back over there now to, to see the effect of uh, the VDS. Okay. So, original equation was ID is equal to 1 half mu n c ox w by L prime hmm, VGS minus VTH square and now I am going to substitute this L prime with L. Okay, So then I am just going to erase this part and I am going to say that oh ok then I will just say 1 plus lambda VDS. Everybody gets it? All I did is I substituted that to get a little more accuracy. What does this tell me? So, if I increase VDS, what will happen? The current will increase, but lambda is small, okay. Uh, so, it will increase slightly. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. So, I have to modify the original curve that we just did, right, and it will look like this. Okay. And the slope of that curve is the lambda comes into play over there. Okay. Now, um, what do you think will happen if you have a larger length, L? You have a smaller device and you have a larger device. Correct. Because delta L is the same, kind of same. But if you have a larger length versus smaller length, the smaller length will have a more percentage variation. Does that make sense? Okay. So, kind of uh, you should have the insight that if I have a larger channel length, then this channel length modulation effect is less. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So that's the that's the main point I'm trying to make. Okay. The next part we are going to talk about is called body effect. Also called backgate effect. Okay. So um, what this is doing is. Let's apply VB potential uh, to the bulk, okay, not uh, not zero to understand this effect, okay. And gate, brain, source, and plus, and plus, and plus. And this is my P minus, okay. So right now I'm just going to give you the equation, um, and then uh, then we will get into the insights as well, okay. So think about the uh, uh, the bulk uh, it's the other side it's a back side of your channel think about that okay channel is happening at the surface and the bulk is like a yet another gate okay so bulk can also have influence on your channel okay so what was our definition of threshold voltage the channel is formed and the carriers are going in that in that zone right so i tried really hard to give you an insightful expl explanation for that but think of it as a capacitive divider and there is a push pull going on okay so um, 
it's not a very accurate analogy, but sometimes it, if, you, if you bias yourself in a certain way, you can think about it. So we are trying to increase this potential, okay? And then we are trying to make, make sure that the, the channel part, okay, it, it goes above certain potential, okay? Now, if I take the bottom potential down, I have to work harder on the top side. Do you get that? Is it two capacitors in series? The capa first capacitance is the gate capacitance to the channel and channel to the substrate. Okay, so there are two capacitances. Uh, again, it's a very inaccurate and analogy, but if you, the only reason I'm telling you is that you will never get the signs wrong. The signs you should not get get wrong. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, so the analogy here is if I if I increase the backplate, uh, if I decrease the backplate potential for an MOS device, huh, then it's going to be harder for me to get the channel form, so I have to increase the top plate potential also higher, which kind of tells you that, oh, my threshold voltage is increasing. You get it? Yes, no? Either you get it or you don't. Okay, so it's like, uh, you know, uh, think about is there, are, there is a rope, and there is a hostel 16 on one side and hostel 15 on one side. And if hostel 15 starts pulling things in one direction, then the hostel 16 has to contribute more effort and that's kind of what is going on. The threshold voltage of the device keeps increasing if you take the bulk potential negative, further negative, okay. okay. So the equation point of view, it is like this, you have a VTH is equal to VTH0 plus gamma, this is the uh, body effect coefficient, 2 phi F plus VSP minus Okay, and now we will get to the insights part again. Okay, what do you think will happen when VSB increases? VSB, okay, so this is my, uh, this is my gate and this is my source and this is my bulk. I'm increasing VSB, this potential. Which means I'm taking bulk more and more negative down, okay. So in this particular equation, as you can see, the VTH will increase. That's all we have to get it right, okay? All right. Now, uh, that's the insight I wanted to give you. Basically, other way we can say that if VBS goes up, then VT will go down, all right? And we use this uh, many times in circuit design, okay? Sometimes we want to control the VTH, okay? So, uh, you know, to small extent, we can use this second order effect. You just have to be careful and what you have to be careful about is think about it this, okay. Uh, sine of P plus and N plus, okay. So if I make VB positive, what's the second order effect that can happen? Look at the PN junction. Can you think about that? I'm making P plus positive, positive, positive and let's say I go beyond 0.7 volts. The PN junction will forward bias, okay. And that's not good because now you have done something malicious with the device. And because that will have certain consequences, we'll get into later. So we don't want to make that happen. So this, there is a limit to how much you can exploit this effect. But you can exploit the effect. You can control the VT slightly, okay? And many times to control that current, you put a resistor in this part. So if you put a resistor, then you can limit the amount of current which can flow into the substrate, all right? So kind of like a negative feedback, in a, in a way, not sure, okay, all right. The, the last part today I want to cover is Okay, so the concept is the following. Again, I'm plotting these two, VGS, and I'm plotting square root of ID. Can you tell me how this plot will look like? I'm changing VGS on the x-axis, and I'm, I'm plotting square root of ID based on whatever we know so far. Uh, sorry, what was it again? VDS. Um, let's say the VDS is... Uh, Actually, it doesn't matter about VDS. The simplest one, what, what, can, what can you think? So first of all, what happens, uh, see, I'm telling you simple things first and I'm things, making things complicated, remember that, okay? So, huh, square root of, let's say the transistor is in saturation for your uh, linear, okay? But how will the plot looks like? Huh? Huh, good. Everybody gets that offset part? What is the offset part? 
VTH. Huh? Below VTH, business is zero. Huh? And then after VTH, if it's a saturated device, I'm doing square root of ID. It should be linear as you just said, right? Something like this, right? And this is my VTH. Correct? But in reality, it doesn't work that way. There is never discontinuity in, as you already know, right? I said digital, there is no such thing as digital in the nature. So this discontinuity doesn't exist. I hope you get what I'm saying. Right? There is, it's not like this VTH part, it's zero. Uh, below VTH, it's zero. And after VTH, things start changing. There is no discontinuity. So there is, if you magnify this, what you will see is this. Okay, so there is a gradual change. Uh, and then there is a, you know, increase. so this is what we call sub-threshold. Region. Or also we call it weak inversion. And the current is given uh, for this is given by this equation. Id is equal to I0 exponential EGS. And this zeta is Vt 1 minus e to the power minus Vds divided by Vt. Now this Vt is different means differently. Generally zeta is greater than 1 and Vt is the thermal voltage which is Kt over Q. 26 millivolt at room temperature. Okay. Is that part clear? So right now I am just giving you, it, it looks like a bipolar transistor at that point when you go into that zone in the subthreshold region. Okay. Uh, because in the bipolar transistor equation you will you will see this, this exponential behavior. Okay. okay. All right. So I think I'll stop right here and now I'm going to take questions. Thank you.